lifeblood of nations at war, steams out under the protecting guns of a Royal Canadian anti-aircraft cruiser. In the pleasant sunshine, the gun crews go about their duties as the ships of the convoy plow on with their vital cargo. Then, suddenly, strange aircraft are spotted. Soon the serene sky turns hostile with enemy planes. Action Station! From the engine room, the bridge demands speed and more speed. Boilers strain under the demand. Indicators race madly. Gun crews scramble. It's a race with Jerry. Men and guns are pitted against planes and bombs. And the prize? Ships of the convoy. Canadian Navy guard the flow of supplies to the front. It is every Canadian's job to pay for those supplies. We must all buy victory bonds and put victory first. Here's a new wrinkle in mobile warfare. A troop now training in England is learning all the tricks of assault training on bicycles. It looks peaceful enough to be a cycling club, out for a spin through the English countryside, even though the boys don't ride all over the road blocking the traffic. Hey, fellas, uh, don't look now, but an enemy aircraft is approaching. That's right, into the woods and keep low. There's no place bicycles can't go. Either the bicycle carries the man, or the man carries the bicycle. Just as if cycling isn't hard enough on its own, the fellows set up obstacles for themselves. If you can do this, you're all set for the Grand National Derby. Bicycle troops in training for the European struggle aren't overlooking the landing operation. Right now, the bikes look as though they had met up with a truck in the road and had got the worst of it. But the carriers race on with their cargo while all hell breaks loose. for that dash across the beach. The masses of pipe and wire and rubber tires unfold into bicycles again, and the race for cover begins. A sandy beach isn't the best place to break speed records, and there are no prizes for it. Here's how to get a bicycle and its rider over a wall in a hurry. And these warriors on wheels are in a hurry. En route to Canada, the first soldier on the Italian front to be awarded the Victoria Cross, Major Paul Triquet, arrives in England. He has only a few hours before starting the second lap of his journey that takes him over the Atlantic. Then, suddenly, word comes that the king will receive him at Buckingham Palace. Still wearing his battle dress, he was ushered into the king's own study. The investiture was informal, and after decorating Major Triquet, the king chatted with him, getting first-hand information on the capture of Casa Berardi. When he reaches Canada, his first stop will be Cabano, Quebec, where he will join his family after having added another glorious page to the history of Canada. At 
At an eastern Canadian port, a happy cargo arrives. It is made up of some of the wives and kiddies Johnny Canuck has sent home from England. Canada is proud of her 18,000 adopted daughters who have been able to learn about Canadian life through pamphlets and classes made available to them in England. Now they have reached their new home after a long journey. Confident they will be happy in their new surroundings and confident of a secure future for the new generation of Canadians under smiling skies far from the alarms of war. This is Peter Sturzberg of the CBC reporting from the Italian front. For the dead of Ortona, the bell of its cathedral, the cathedral of St. Thomas the Apostle told. For the Canadians who died in taking the town, for the Germans who fell defending it. And for the dust and ashes of the cathedral itself, the bell told. For the living as well, the bell tolls, calling them to prayer. The priest, Don Pietro di Fubio, has fixed up the sacristy as a chapel. And now, between the rows of white cupboards where the holy vestments were kept, there is an escape from the world outside, from the regular enemy shelling that is continuing to bring death to Ortona. On December the 21st last year, which happened to be the Feast of St. Thomas, the Germans mined and blew up the cathedral not because of the legend, but because the clock tower might serve as an observation post. A single bell calls the people to the little chapel in the sacristy, which is all that remains of the cathedral. They don't toll them often, because the vibration shakes loose the bricks in the battered belfry. But here they are tolling now for the other St. Thomas, St. Thomas Aquinas. this little red schoolhouse wears battle dress and three pips. He is a supervisor of the educational services which conduct classes in operational areas of the Italian front. All units are kept constantly up to date with a syllabus of available courses in a wide variety of subjects from chemistry to history. These are designed to prepare the men for their return to Civvy Street. In addition, Correspondence courses and last-minute news bulletins are regularly compiled at field headquarters. A well-organized system of dispatch utilizing all existing means of communication takes this material rapidly to the men throughout the far-flung forces. In this way, lads on outpost duty are able to know what goes on in the outside world and carry on with the study of their chosen subjects while resting, momentarily, from the actual business of war. The school bell doesn't ring in an improvised seat of learning, nor will teacher keep his pupils after school if they don't give the right answers. They are all keen to master even maths if it will help win the war. Setting up and conducting classes under difficult conditions, such as on an alert ACAC -ac post, is all in the day's work of these instructors who serve a large number of units. In future years, Canadian fighting men will have good cause to be grateful to the educational services. Other students in battle dress are studying grimmer problems, the immediate task of learning how to dislodge the enemy from his occupied positions in town. The Italian campaign has featured many actions where our infantry have had to force every inch of their advance by bitter house-to-house -house combat. In modern warfare, all details of an assault are worked out ahead of time. Experts in the art of annihilation teach all the tricks learned from the engagements with the enemy. Every fighting man is given the opportunity of explaining his own pet method of handling a difficult situation and experience is gained by battle maneuvers. In this way, every detail is taken into account to speed the sweep of our united armies as they move ever forward toward the fortress of Europe and final victory. <laughs>